Hey guys, this is part 6 of the Java game programming tutorial. In this video I'm going to show you how to set up a wave spawning system for the enemies. But before I go ahead and start, I'm going to change something in game panel.java. Um, if you play the game you notice that it looks sort of blocky and pixely. Well, that's because there's no anti-alias on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to modify the graphics object. Uh, I never remember what the line was, the code was for this, so I have to look it up. It was g.set rendering hint rendering hints dot key anti-aliasing um, rendering hints dot value anti-alias on See, and we, that, that's only for the um, the graphics so if you want to do it for text you also have to do it for that rendering hints dot key text anti-aliasing and rendering hints dot value text anti-alias on. This is ridiculous. They seriously need to change that, make it easier to remember or something, make it shorter at least. Anyway, if we compile and run, it looks smoother, definitely. Cool. So now we are going to start with the actual wave spawning system. In game panel.java, go ahead and go back up to the fields. We are creating a few uh, variables. Um, we're going to need a wave start timer. Also, we need start timer diff. This is to keep track of how much time has passed by. We need int wave number and we need hmm wave start and boolean that tells us whether to start creating enemies or not okay so let's go ahead and instantiate those go back to run and here uh, I had you create five enemies before that was temporary so you can go ahead and delete that and now replace it with the initialization of the new variables. Wave start timer zero. Wave start timer diff zero. Wave start is it doesn't really matter. True, false, true. Wave number is gonna start at zero. Now go back up here to game update. Move player update down. Here we're gonna start a new wave. Okay, this is the important stuff here. This is what we're gonna do. Here we're gonna do if wave start timer is zero and enemies that size zero, we want to make sure that all the enemies are off the screen. Then we are going to increment the wave number. Set wave start to false. We don't want to start creating enemies yet. This is like a delay timer to show what wave we're on. Wave start timer. We're gonna start that up. System .nano time. Cool. And over here, if we've already started the wave start timer, we are going to set the difference. Timer diff. And this is going to be the current time minus the wave start timer time in milliseconds, so divide by a million. Um, ooh, one more uh, variable that we need to take into account up here. Here, one more. This is going to be wave delay, and this is going to be set at 1500. Make it 2000, two seconds. Two seconds is not that much more than 15. So, we got that. Okay, so we have that, and we want to check 
if the wave start timer diff is greater than wave delay. And if it is, then we are going to be starting the next wave. Wave start true. I'm going to reset the timer and the diff. Oops, it's timer diff. Okay. Here, create enemies. Cool. This is where we actually create the enemies. So if wave start then simply um, also don't forget to check that enemy size is zero no enemies on the screen that's when we want to create enemies so we'll make a new function called create new enemies uh, we'll just create that somewhere uh, down here that's fine under game draw so private void create new enemies just for a sanity check we're going to clear the enemies array list and now we're gonna start creating some enemies wave number if wave number is one uh, let's go ahead and create four new rank one type one enemies so enemies dot add new enemy one one um let's tr make the one for wave two except eight enemies this time so two waves that should get us started now we want the graphical representation of the wave on the screen. So here we have several things. We have draw background and here we can actually get rid of this. No longer need it. So in game render we have draw background, draw player, bullet, enemy, and now we are going to draw wave number to let the player know what wave they're on. First things first, wave start timer. Check if it's not zero, that means we're in the process of creating enemies. So, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna set new font. Yes, finally, new font. I like this font called Century Gothic because it <laughs> looks pretty cool. And plain 18 size. The string that we're gonna write on the screen is wave plus and then wave number so that's gonna go on the middle of the screen and we're not gonna just flash it on the screen we're gonna have it like pulsate in and out using sign first we need to get the strings um, parameters like the length width and we do that by using get font, get font metrics get string bounds of s with g get width this gives us the total length of the string in pixels and so next thing we need is alpha this is the transparency to make it look cool we're going to use sign for this pi times wave start timer diff divided by wave delay Cool. And just a check to make sure it's not going over. Make sure alpha is capped at 255. G.set color, new color. And we're going to set white with the transparency alpha. Finally, we're going to draw a string S. We're going to draw it at game panel. Dot Ooh, we are in game panel. We don't need that. So width divided by two um, minus the length of the string divided by two and height divided by two. So let's see what that looks like. Java C compile. Ooh, ooh, cannot find symbol. Get font metrics, and I spelled it wrong. Make sure you spelled metrics right 
This is I C. Cool. Start that up. Wave one. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, take you down. Wave two. Eight enemies now. Uh, got you. Mm, wave three. Okay, so that now it, it's just automatic. So the system is working by itself now. All we really need to do from now on, if we want to make new waves, is go down here to create new enemies and just add extra waves and whatever enemies that we want. But right now our game looks pretty empty. It's just a blue screen shooting at some dots. So let's draw some more HUD like stuff on the screen. The first thing that we want to do is draw player lives. Awesome. So here we're going to get the amount of player lives that we have. So int i0 i is less than player dot get lives i plus plus. Now we don't have get lives in player so we're just going to I'm just going to do that right now. Go back to player dot java in fact, we're missing a lot of gets here, so might as well just get those out of the way. Get x, return x, get y, return y, get r, return r, oops. And now the lives, public in, get lives, return lives. Cool. So now here we're going to do g dot set color, color of white, which is the player's color, and then g dot fill oval. We're going to start it at x20, and we're going to add 20 for every um, player that we have. 20 int. I don't know why I casted this thing. It's such a force of habit. And this is already an int, so player dot get r. Actually, this is times 2, because we want the diameter, not the radius. Cool. Now we need g.setColor, color.white.darker. Uh, and this time, this is our boundary now. We're going to draw oval. Again, like last time, we're going to set the stroke to 3 thickness and then reset it back to 1 afterwards. Let's see what that looks like. Compile and run. And there's our lives up here. Cool. Alright, awesome. So now, um, there's a problem. Um, when we get hit by the enemies, nothing happens. So that's what we're going to do in the next video. The next video is going to handle player enemy collision. So yeah, we will all see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.